All right, it's early October 2022, getting ready to head out west to uh, Idaho for the for about a month, actually probably be there about five weeks um, for mostly elk, but I've also got tags for bear, wolf, mountain lion. I brought a trapping license and also a fishing license, so I uh, just plan to uh, you know do some camping out there. Just want to show a little bit of my prep. Uh, not everything's complete, but kind of got stuff organized here with my my hunting stuff you know the basic uh knives an assortment of saws then over here we get into the some of the trap and stuff i haven't gone through all my traps yet but i'm probably going to bring the only thing i'm really targeting is fox when i first get there i can trap fox and then uh of course coyote and raccoon and badger and skunk but uh i really enjoy trapping martin but that season doesn't open until november 1st so Got some of uh, the bins here that I'm going to use to tote everything out there. And I bought some clean ones so I can use to to wash off the meat uh, right there in the stream. I'm going to be camping next to a stream, which is my preferred technique. And then I can just get everything cleaned up. Like I said, bring in a, a nice clean table and uh, plan to do most of the, the butchering and processing right there at camp. That's that's my plan. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know. Um, and then here we have the, the camping stuff. So we've got some tire change, several tarps, ropes, extension cord, a little bit of my food here. Uh, I don't do a lot of cooking, although I do have a Coleman stove. Uh, I like to just eat stuff that's, that's really uh, easy and doesn't require a lot of uh, dirty dishes and, uh, and clean it up afterwards. So, you know, stuff like cans of soup and, and uh, SpaghettiOs, ramen, uh, stuff like that. I can just put some hot water in. And, uh, you know, I do have some frying pans and stuff. Uh, like I said, I have a fishing license, so if I get some fish or some, some fresh meat, we can uh, cook it up right there. Got a nice stove there for the tent, and the tent is is right there. It's a wall tent, a 10 by 12. Comes all complete in that little carry-on bag. It's only a, well, not a carry-on bag, but a roller bag. Weighs 100 pounds. Got the five inch stove pipe. I got that piece of plywood there that I put under the stove and a couple of bricks to prop it up. So I'll be out there uh, pretty much alone the first couple weeks, but then my son is coming out and uh, my tag is up for the the panhandle zone, but his is down in the salmon zone. So I'm gonna hunt a few weeks and then I'll fly him into uh, probably Missoula and then we'll head down to his area. So I've got you know stuff for him as well an extra cot and sleeping bag and stuff like that. Some of our other camping gear, you know, just the uh, essentials, instant coffee, matches, a few coffee cups, toilet paper, bug spray, a whole bunch of different uh, types of fire starter and uh, flashlights. And uh, I've got a lot of coolers. So I'm not just bringing my truck, I'm gonna tow the trailer out there as well. I've got a place to drop that trailer off close by at a buddy's house. And uh, so I'm going to bring probably more stuff than I need. But last time I went out, I, I had my truck so full and I didn't really have room to bring anything back had I gotten an elk, which I, which I didn't. So this time I'm just going to have uh, plenty of room. I've got this big giant cooler here, another cooler bag, a couple more coolers there, and then a lot of the extra totes. Uh, bringing a chainsaw, some extra boots. I'm also, you know, have some <clears throat> some hiking boots. Um, as far as the uh, the hunting stuff, uh, my son will be using the uh, six five Creedmoor here. Got him a, a nice little savage in the youth model. He's only twelve, so uh, didn't want anything with with too much recoil. So that thing is is really nice. It's got the same recoil as like his two forty three, but it's got a lot better uh, ballistics and and energy uh, should be no problem taking down elk with that and then I'll be using the Browning A-Bolt in a 300 wind mag <clears throat> and uh, of course I bring a 22 pistol with me just when I'm out checking traps and stuff um, with plenty of ammo. Alright elk camp 2022 up in the Panhandle of Idaho that's my buddy's camp over there he drove up from Texas you can see the uh, frost in the windshield it got down probably 27 28 last night 
It's warmed up to 31 now. And then this here's my camp. I've got the new truck. I'll just show you my setup a little bit. Got a firewood here enough for eh, maybe a week or so. And then out in back here, I have all my, uh, I know it looks like a lot, but I brought all my trapping stuff with, a bunch of uh, fox traps, I brought some gold pan and stuff, and also everything I need to process uh, game right here in camp, Got a, including a meat grinder and all of the uh, storage bags, a couple tables and stuff, everything I need to, uh, to process game, and then flesh and beam. I've got all my stretchers and everything there for any animals that I catch. I've all, I just set out my first two traps yesterday, fox traps. So I've got a couple dozen with, but I'm focusing on getting an elk first. Inside the tent, got the, uh, this is the uh, center of the attraction, the lifesaver. This Yukon stove here, it's pretty handy. And uh, not a lot of co cooking implements. I don't do a lot of actual cooking because I don't like doing dishes. Uh, although I can down in the in the river pretty easy. But I eat a lot of canned goods, and uh, for dry goods I just have like ramen and instant oatmeal. But for heating up these cans, I just take one of these uh, cups right here, put about half full of water put my can in there until the water starts to boil, take it out, and then I pop the, the top so it doesn't explode on me, and then heat the other, uh, the bottom half. Got a nice, comfortable mat here, one of these Tempur-Pedic mats on my cot, <clears throat> extra warm sleeping bag. Uh, got a little AR there with a thermal scope just to keep tabs on the predators in the, uh, in the camp at night. And then the uh, hunting rifle, I'm using a 300 wind mag for the elk and bear. Got another cot over there. <clears throat> so I'm moving locations here in a, another week or so going down to the salmon zone. My son's going to fly in, and uh, so there will be two of us living in the tent. Haven't had any really infestation with any animals. I sprayed the whole perimeter when I first got here with, uh, with bug spray and then a tick spray. Uh, but I did have uh, a mouse or something in here the other day that chewed on my toilet paper, so that's why I put that up out of reach and put a mouse trap uh, back in there. All right, getting ready to head up the mountain. Just wanted to uh, show you what I carry in my little backpack for the day. I just have a Eagle Creek backpack and uh, carry a little tarp here, a little section of tarp, just like you know, three by five or so, so I can uh, lay it on the ground and, and throw some. Uh, meat on there to keep it clean so it doesn't get full of leaves and dirt and stuff. Got some of the, the game bags here, the extra large ones for the the quarters. Uh, two skin and knives. Got the, the VTAC Norseman and uh, one of Clem's custom made knives here. Saw, which is uh, super handy for cutting through bone. Uh, a couple of small pieces of type 3 nylon or 550 cord, parachute cord, whatever you call it in case I need to uh, to hang up the, the meat from a tree or a thousand other uses. Uh, compass, extra batteries for, those batteries are for either the uh, the GPS, and I got the 64 uh, one here that has all the topographical maps on it, it's pretty handy, but I have to now bring reading glasses so I can read the GPS. Just had eye surgery, um, and now I need glasses to read, apparently. Uh, two uh, headlamps, just like I bring two knives, right? Because one is none, two is one. I have uh, all my food and drink for the being out all day from dawn till dusk, uh, you know, Gatorade and water. And then I bring a little bottle of iodine here. I'm sure the stream, the stream water is good to drink, but uh, when I do refill, uh, I just put a drop of that iodine in there just to kill any GRE or whatever. And then uh, just carry some beef sticks. I like a can of peaches or a can of pears with me. And then uh, power bars or whatever. Have some emergency stuff over here. I have a radio. 
Uh, so I can talk to my buddy. The range isn't great on those, but if we're up on hilltops, and we're not, we're going to be on one mountain over, so we should be able to have comms. We have a plan in place if we're not back by dark. I also have a couple pen flares and some matches and some some signaling uh, tape right there. So that's basically what I got with for the day, and uh, hopefully we get something. <laughs> Alright, just look at the uh, some of the terrain that we're in here. It's extremely thick and very steep. I don't know if you can see up on that, uh, that ridge over there. So right there, you see the trees are shorter, and then at that line there, they get really tall. <clears throat> right there at that split, uh, it gets really thick, and that's where I found those there's three uh, elk beds right there at the line. So up above there, those are bigger, older trees with very little uh, ground cover, no undergrowth really, not like all this brush crap here. So it's really easy walking. And where I camped last night was up at the top there, about a half mile from that area. And I just walked around the top. And I'm coming down this, uh, this spur here, I thought it would be a little bit easier plus I didn't want to walk through there since I'm gonna be hunting there tomorrow but uh, I don't know if you can hear but there is a, a stream down there and that's why I walked across the top of the drainage where there's no water but I need to head down there because uh, I've still got quite a ways to go to camp through this thick shit and uh, I'm completely out of water so that's what I'm gonna do I think the reason this is so thick in that area and then right here is because you can see that stump right there it looks like they logged this off and all the trees here are you know six to eight inches in diameter so they probably logged this off maybe I don't know we'll guess and say 30 years ago and now all of this uh, the regrowth is uh, super thick so uh, yeah I'll be looking forward to getting back up there tomorrow afternoon spend the night I might just spend a couple days out there tomorrow's Tuesday I might stay there until uh, Thursday and all right made it down here to the stream pristine clear I'm sure there's uh, no harmful effects in drinking this but just as a general rule when gathering water from a stream you want to always get it from the fastest moving water And then, like I said, I'm sure that this is fine, but something I always carry with me out here in the uh, in the woods is a little bottle of uh, betadine iodine. And uh, for this, you just need one drop. One drop will treat up to a quart of water, unless it's like really cloudy water or something and you might want to put two drops and uh, should wait a few minutes you know 10 to 20 minutes for it to kill any bacteria or anything in there then mainly giardia is what we're worried about but like I said I can go ahead and drink this right now I'm sure it's uh, clear so should only be a few hundred meters down to the uh, trail and from there it's about a mile and a a uh, mile and a half, mile and three quarter to walk on the trail back to camp, but that's a pretty easy walk. Alrighty. Alright, just uh got back to camp uh, spent about 46 hours out uh, six of those hours were hiking there and back and spent a full 40 hours on the side of the mountain up there where I saw some elk sign but didn't see any elk had a, had a lot of mule deer around me but uh, today's Thursday 
So before I left on Tuesday to go up the mountain, I pulled the, pulled the tent and I got everything packed up. So I'm just double checking to make sure everything's uh, cleaned up here. When I got to this campsite, there was batteries and beer caps and all kinds of crap laying here. So I uh, tried to leave it uh, cleaner than I found it. Except for this big pile of firewood I left for the next lucky camper. And my buddy over there, he pulled up camp yesterday while I was out. And uh, he left the, the benches, they were already there, and then a stack of firewood as well. So, all right, well, there's four days, four, two, three, four, four days left of uh, season here in the Panhandle Zone. But uh, like I've been saying, we got some really bad weather rolling in. Um, starting tomorrow so we're gonna have to rethink where we can hunt the next uh, three four days might be doing some road hunting all right all right part two of the Idaho elk hunt finished up in the uh, panhandle hunted hard for 14 days didn't see any elk got a bunch of snow and uh, and then my back went out so rest up for a couple days down here in the salmon zone now with my kid who has a tag for this zone and uh, he just flew into Missoula a couple hours ago and uh, right away about right there probably about a thousand yards away there's nine elk on the side of the hill a little bit out of range for the 6.5 Greenmore plus I can't tell if any of them are bulls from here but uh got about a five days to hunt, so I'm pretty optimistic that we will get us a bull here. All right, stay tuned. All right, so we got up here, got to the bull. Nice, uh, I mean, I'm just videoing, so. Anyway, we need to get busy here and uh, get this guy skinned and uh, quartered and packed out of here. Back there's where we where we shot from 422 yards away. All right, so uh, back at uh, elk camp, elk season is over. Uh, my son was successful getting that nice spike bull elk and uh, he flew back a couple days ago. So uh, I just quartered and deboned the meat and washed it off real good here in the stream. And then I just left it sitting in uh, a couple totes in the cooler there sitting in the water with some rocks on top just uh, pretty close to camp uh, I think the bears are probably hibernating by now so I'm not too worried about that so it was snowing this morning but nice uh, sunny day right now temperature is probably right around freezing so this is a uh, nice working conditions here I brought this table with me this assortment of knives and uh, just showing you my process here got a hunk of the uh, top round off of one of the hind quarters and I've got a bin over here for the uh, the burger I'm gonna grind that up and then that's the meat I have to get to yet this is just scrap some bloodshot stuff and, and uh, some tendons I can use that for some fox bait maybe later and then uh, just just got started here so got a pile of steaks pile of what I'm cutting into really thin quarter inch or less to make into jerky uh, and then I'm gonna take some bigger sections of the loin to try uh, some other stuff with that so this is my setup brought a bunch of uh, Ziploc bags I don't use a freezer paper anymore Ziploc bags are a lot they're way easier and I actually think that they work better than uh, than the freezer paper my meat will last 10 or 12 months before it starts to get uh, a gamey taste or freezer burn unlike that freezer paper where it only lasts about six months so that's my go-to now alrighty so these big hunks of the hind quarters just want to find where the natural separation is between the muscle groups top round bottom round eye of round and just separate those out as best you can Got a little bloodshot area here. 
so you can just grind that up but uh i'm not super picky so i'll just throw that in my scrap pile and that there's going to be ground into burger i always cut them in pretty small chunks uh i want to make sure that there's no bullet in there or that will ruin my grinder don't ask me how i know We've got one more muscle group here you can kind of feel in there with your fingers too where the those major muscle groups separate. Trim off that little bit of fat right there. All right, so now we got a big hunk of meat here and you can see the uh, you can see the lines here, what they call the grain. And you always want to cut not with the grain but across the grain for the most the most tender cut of steak. Use the uh, VTAC Norseman for this here. So I'm just going to trim a little bit off the edge here. And then to start cutting however thick you want your steaks, whether it's half inch, three quarter, or one inch. Uh, I do mine usually about three quarters of an inch. That's going to be some really good eating right there. It's a lot easier doing this when the meat is uh, chilled or even slightly frozen so if it's warm it'll all kind of flop around a lot so it's a pretty good temperature right now like I said we're right about it's probably right around 30 degrees right now I know that uh, it's ice forming here on the table where I wash it off steak out of there and this hunk on the end you could cut you know make that in a steak no problem but I'll just grind that up we go through a lot of burger all right so that's that process pretty simple all right all done uh, butchering that uh, that elk probably got about uh, 40, 50 pounds of uh, steaks and back straps, tenderloins, and uh, jerky meat. And then this here's all the meat I'm going to grind up tomorrow, maybe the next day, depending on the weather. But this is probably, uh, it's over 50 pounds, I'd say. So probably got right around 100 pounds of good uh, boneless meat out of that, that spike elk. And I'm going to eat good tonight. Right out here in uh, Idaho still, the elk hunt is uh, over. So I just set a few uh, martin traps around camp. I caught two on uh, my first check and uh, then it dried up. So just last night I set out four more martin sets uh, a little farther from camp, a couple hundred yards. So my setup, uh, pretty simple here. I just put a bracket on a little stake in the tree and I normally use the 160s. I know a lot of guys use uh, 120s, but uh, I like the 160s. And then up in there, I just got a little, uh, little hunk of beaver meat and some lure. And uh, it's been pretty successful. And it's, it's they're real quick and easy to set up. And then I got another one over there on the log, and I see that the trap is missing. Uh, I don't like setting them that low normally because then if you do catch something, a, a fox can come and eat it. I have had a, a fox eat a marten before, uh, but it was just getting dark, so I just wanted to get something set in. And I see uh, the chain is still here, so that's a good sign. And there we have look at that guy. He's still alive. 
That's, he must have just gotten caught. I mean, like, within the past couple of minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and dispatch him uh, so he's not suffering and reset this. All right, so the end of my five week hunting, trapping, camping adventure is now over. Got everything packed up and uh, ready to get on the road for Probably like 12, 1300 miles. Yeah, over 1300 miles back home. So uh, I'll take my time, taking a couple days to get there. But I uh, had a good time, you know. My son uh, got that bull, so that was obviously the highlight. I didn't do nearly as much videoing during that as I had planned, but it was a uh, high energy moment. Just trying to get him off the hill. It was really windy and it might look uh, warm in the video, but it was about 30 degrees, and uh, so I was just trying to get that going and get it, get it processed. So we got a little over 100 pounds of meat out of the deal, and uh, it's going to have a nice European head mount with that uh, unusual, non-typical, you know, antler that kind of points down, and the other one comes out of the side of his head. So got a few Martin. That was fun. I uh, didn't get any foxes here. Had a fox walk right by my trap uh, last night, but I didn't want to step in it. So anyway, I'll try to get this uh, up and loaded. And like I said, uh, maybe I didn't say today's Veterans Day. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I served uh, 27 years, nine months, and 19 days in the U in the U.S. Army. Uh, I'm not asking you to thank me for my service. I had a had a good time. It was my pleasure. Loved it, loved every minute of it, pretty much. Loved most of it. So uh, you can check out my Facebook page at Friendly But Not Your Friend for some more uh, interesting photos and stories. Alrighty, till next time. Thanks.